Hello, Kelvin. Hi, Gunnar. Hello. Nice to see you. Nice to talk to you. Uh, and you are one of the most, uh, one of the busiest persons in EG at the moment. That's why I wanted to have this opportunity to talk to you and to ask you a few questions. Are yeah. you ready? Yeah, yeah. Okay, the first first question is you are at the moment very known as the quiz master of EG. So you make an EG quiz every week now in this Corona times. And uh, so tell me more. Can, what, what can you tell me about the quiz? How does it work? Well, um, I, th I think it's best to explain the format first. So there's um, six rounds and each round has a different topic. So uh, the first round is usually chosen by the winner of the last week. The second round is voted on on a Telegram group. Uh, then the next two are ones that I've chosen. And then there's a general knowledge one and then there's a picture round. So what happens is in the quiz, we go into a meet call on Sundays at about six o'clock. Uh, Central European time and we um, and so I send a form out for people and they answer questions on the form and the questions show up on a PowerPoint presentation. And uh, so you've been doing it for how long now? For how many weeks? We had five weeks so far. We had a break this week, so there wasn't a quiz yesterday, but there will Why be a was quiz. The... Why was there a break? <laughs> because I didn't uh, I didn't feel like doing one for one week. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine. Come on, it's also it's like work. It's like a lot of preparation going into it, right? Yeah, it takes about four hours to prepare. So it takes. And afterwards, long. you also have to check the results and everything. Yeah, that takes about an hour afterwards to do the results. So, how, so how many people take part in the quiz every week? I think the most we had was the second week. There was about eighty people, eighty, ninety people, but on average, I think there's about fifty, fifty-five. Oh, that that's pretty part. good. Yeah, you usually get about 15 to 20 teams. Did you expect uh, this big uh, feedback or this interest in the quiz? Um, no, not really. In the beginning, I thought it would just be like a few people. It was really good to see so many people taking part. And so many, like, we've got some older people as well that take part, like Paul Schmitz. And then we've got some new people. So you can have a mixture of questions. And we've had a few questions about AJ that people have gone like, uh, uh including me. I was like, what does any of this mean in the question? OK. <laughs> and, uh, and you said it's like every Sunday usually. Can still new people join? Yep. Uh, new people can join every week. I think someone is keeping a leaderboard for the whole thing. But as far as I'm concerned, it's just every week. It's like a clean slate. Can, can you can you give a tip to people who want to join now? What's the best strategy to get a good score? Oh, uh, well, obviously you can cheat, <laughs> which what? caused some controversy. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but the best way to get a good score is probably just know your stuff. I don't know. Uh, okay. Just just make sure you have a team where everyone knows it's like has a good rounded knowledge. OK, anyway, it sounds very interesting. Have you done quizzes like this before? I've never organized a quiz like this before. I used to, in my second year of university, go to quizzes every week uh, that were organized by the Quiz Society at the university, but I haven't I haven't made quizzes like this before. Oh, nice. And so I said, at the moment, the quiz is on a break, but this weekend is the next opportunity for people to take part again. Yeah, it is. And we're going to have a round, which is for AJ Day. So ah, cool. it'll be good. So I'm tying that in. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Uh, let me change the topic. You, as I mentioned before, you're a very active person at the moment. That means you're also active on the European level of EG. So um, it's, yeah, I guess many people got to know you for the first time really at the last Agora in Salerno, where you were actually running for a position on European level. Uh, can you remember what, what, what it was about? It was for the uh, European Citizenship Working Group Coordinator position. Um, yeah. <laughs> did you How did it feel being on stage? I was very nervous, to be honest. It was a bit scary. <laughs> I've never spoken in front of that many people before, but um, I, I was the only person running for a few weeks. And I thought like, oh, well, like I'll keep the candidature there because I'm the only person running and they need someone for the position. And as soon as someone else applied, I thought, oh, no, uh, now like there's not much chance or whatever. But I, I, I said to myself, I'm going to stay and do the presentation so I can prove to myself that I can do it. And that's why I did but, it. <laughs> but I feel you got a lot of positive feedback from other people about your candidature. 
Yeah, I got, I got, I got lots of positive feedback, lots of constructive feedback on how to improve next time I present. Wasn't really any negative feedback I can remember, so it was quite good. And are you active in the working group anyway now as a member? Yeah, I'm a member, and I'm usually working on the Europe Cafe. But we had lots planned, and uh, then Corona hit, so <laughs> we missed out on the uh, opportunity to do them. But I think we're doing a live one in a couple of weeks. Can you tell us more about that working group? What's the name again and what is the purpose of that working group? Uh, so it's European Citizenship Working Group and the purpose is to, uh, I think it's quite mixed. It's like um, trying to instill a, a feeling of Europeanism, I think, or, um, or further also to discuss topics like topics that are plaguing Europe, like mm -hmm. coronavirus or, and the, or uh, I think we had a call a couple of weeks ago, which was to do with um something sort solidarity during coronavirus so i lots of things are to do with solidarity and stuff like that mm. and you also mentioned the europe cafe which is like a, a branded activity can you tell us more about what the europe cafe is about um yeah it's uh it's a three-part event kind of so it has like an introduction then it has a presentation which will be on a theme and uh, as far as when I was organizing them, the theme was discussed between the working group and the local and also politics interest group are involved. But I'm also the moderator of politics interest group. So it, there's a there's a nice Venn diagram. <laughs> but, so it's basically it's an event which is hosted by an antenna. Yes. Locally. So so I put out an open call for the antenna to host it and then they decide to host it. Then I get in contact with the antenna and we decide on a topic to discuss. And then I'll make the presentation with contact with the antenna and uh, then the antenna delivers it, uh, delivers the, pr the presentation. And then afterwards, there should be a discussion and someone should take a note and send a report back. And can still antenna also apply for new Europe cafes? Yes, I think so. I think we've just we, I think the other day we launched um, a, a guide for antenna wanting to organize events online. Because before it was meant to be an event in person, and I think uh, the the second local to do it was meant to be AJ Udini, uh, uh, Udini. <laughs> and uh, they obviously had to cancel because of the coronavirus in Italy. But I think they mentioned that they were going to do it in Gorizza, so it, so it was going to be a way to recruit people, which I thought was quite cool. You mentioned like organizing online activities. Have you had that experience in the past weeks about organizing online activities aside from the quiz? Uh, I did try and organize something else, but it kind of fell through. Not because no one applied, but because I just didn't. Um, I just didn't have time to do it. Um, okay. Other other than that, I've been on a few other calls, like with Europe on Track. I've been doing their thing and some other meetings. It's worked quite well, I think. It's been a very good nice step forward coming back to the topic of being online you also know the wider audience thanks to the podcast you're doing with Hebel. <laughs> uh, yeah. can you tell us more about how did you get this idea to make a podcast in AJ? I, I think we were very drunk at agro salerno <laughs> and we Hemel was like we should do a podcast and i was like yep yeah, okay <laughs> and then nice. eventually eventually it came into being but we haven't done an episode in a while, which is kind of sad, but I think Hemo's been busy. Yeah, I've heard something, but he has an next episode is basically ready or almost ready to transmit or ah, to publish. Is that what he told you? <laughs> yeah, a couple of days ago. <laughs> That's not what I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think, okay. Time, I think on the first week of the quarantine, actually, there was a episode recorded from a live stream. Okay. So I think that'll be the one that will go out, will be the live stream. Let's come back to the topic of podcasts. Podcasts are a popular thing at the moment all over the world, but EG yeah. didn't really have that yet. And uh, can you tell us a bit more? The format is like 30 minutes? Uh, yeah, it could be anything between 20 and 30 minutes. I think the, the beauty of having a podcast is it's totally up to the people how long it wants to be. And what do you talk about in the podcast? <laughs> well, there's not really a format as such. There's like usually... Uh, usually it's just uh, if we come up with some ideas in the week so I think the last one we recorded me and Hemo were actually together in Aachen so we did some beer tastings um, and then we do other things just random <laughs> random things to do with Ajay I imagine if it was still going then 
or if we're still doing it regularly, then we might have something to do with some universities or the Agora in Yerevan, like if there wasn't any coronavirus around. But uh, and then the we always. Of the... Oh, sorry. And then we, and then we, the 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 main feature which I do is the list of events. <laughs> Okay. From my age, but that's not really possible now. <laughs> anyway, the title of the podcast is Everything Asia. And that means you can find it anywhere where you figure where you can find podcasts, right? Yeah, you can find it on oh, there's a one website that Hemo, is it Anchor FM or something? I don't know, but you can definitely find it on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Okay. Oh, that's that sounds great. Okay, but aside from this, you're also busy in for, for example, for the Asian magazine. Uh, yeah, I proofread for the Asian magazine, but mm -hmm. um, I haven't. Yeah, we haven't had so many articles recently. I don't think. For you as proofreader, uh, you're dealing with a lot of people who don't have English as, as as their mother tongue. So, how do you feel like you as a British person when you deal with all the Asian people who speak like this Asian English? <laughs> It, 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 it doesn't matter. <laughs> I've got used to it now. The main thing I do is get rid of the Zs and replace them with the Ss. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. But uh, do you feel a bit strange like when we mix like American English and British English sometimes? I really find it strange if it's really inconsistent. So there's like a, a document with one sentence in... Oh. I just had a blurry hand. Where well, there's one sentence in a uh, in British English and the next sentence is in American English. I think that's yeah. like um, that's something that's quite weird to see. Um, but yeah, I mostly it's okay. Other than uh, like inconsistencies in spelling, I think everything else is fine. Yeah, actually, I have to say from my experience in EG, the one thing that has improved a lot in EG over the past decade is the level of ling English of the people. So when I, today people, re almost everybody speaks a very good English that yeah. uh, I'm dealing with in EJ. So that's really impressive. Uh, but uh, you were also at the last uh, statutory event, the, the EPM in Barcelona as a reporter. Yes. Yes. Can you tell us yes. more about that experience? Oh, it was quite fun <laughs> to do it. Uh, I got, I had a team of like two other people, I think. And we uh, went to all the sessions and reported live. Well, we tried to do it as live as possible, but at times like, we were actually just focusing more on the action agenda, so we couldn't really uh, report. But it was quite good, yeah. I, I enjoyed that. Yeah, you have also participants, so I guess it's quite difficult to share yeah. the responsibility. Yeah. yeah. Yes, and I've heard you're also working for the EJ Wikipedia. You're contributing <laughs> to the EJ Wiki. And uh, can you tell us a bit more? What's your interest in participating in that? And what have you been doing, for example? Well, mainly recently, I, I created some pages like IJ Sheffield page and uh, added some information. I edited the interest group page, just things I'm really working on. So like I just add the information which is relevant. But today I was uh, I added all the numbers next to the CDs today. Um, so you know which CDs, which number. And I also added the list of all the chair people I could find for the uh, Agora, <laughs> which was uh, interesting, to say the least. So with this broad portfolio of things you're doing in EG, is there actually a place which is which you like most, some activity you like most, something which you, where you can find but something you want to focus on in the future? Uh, I just like doing most of everything. Like I, I quite like thematics, but I'm not an expert in them. So like I like to get involved, but I don't if you understand what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I was I seeing you mentioned something online. You want to organize an event about mathematics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it was partly partly a joke. I don't think many people would want that. <laughs> ah, you never know. But it's a good chance, I guess, to get people from outside of AG to be interested <laughs> in that event. I we remember, I was, but yeah, well, not only, I mean, I remember I was going to an event about neuroscience taking place in Vienna many years ago. And to tell the truth, I had no clue about neuroscience at all. And I didn't <laughs> half understand half of the lectures, but it was fun to be in Vienna. And there were a lot of participants who actually enjoyed it. Half the participants were from outside of EG and they had an amazing time. So don't underestimate yeah. these kind of events. It can be mathematics can be really fun, I guess. 
Yeah, I think so. I heard about this event that um, Sheffield and Manchester did before I joined um, to do with something to do with, um, it was like a detective course or something, and there was quite a lot of maths involved, I heard. Okay. So what did they find you, doing the detective course? I don't know. <laughs> I only heard from a participant. <laughs> okay. Anyway, you are also you're mem you mentioned you're a member of EG Sheffield, right? Yeah, yeah. You're also a board member of EG Sheffield. For another few weeks, yeah. <laughs> Until so the new what's your... Yeah. Sorry. What's your position? Uh, I'm PR responsible, but I, okay. I, do, I don't do an overly lot, over, overly lot of PR. I, I mainly just do the position of a board member. Like in some locals, they just have a board member, like I, I guess, yeah. I guess so, in these times, doing PR is not that easy anyway. Yeah, and I'm not necessarily an expert in PR, so <laughs> um, we have we have we have another board member that also does PR, so we okay. we kind of split it between us. But I think you don't actually live in Sheffield, right? No, I live in Nottingham, which is about sixty kilometers south. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so, how was Easy Nottingham doing? <laughs> well, I was going to found it, but then I um, and then I came in some difficulty with the uh, with the students' union here, so. I couldn't do it. And I'm leaving next year anyway, so there's no point. Or at the end of this year, I'm leaving. Or Sorry, not even the end of this year. In September, I'm leaving. <laughs> and uh, I thought maybe there's no point doing it if I can't get anyone active before yeah. September. Let's come back to the future. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us more about what you've mentioned with the student union? So why is it difficult to found an EG contact in uh, the UK? Well... <laughs> In Nottingham, it's different from Sheffield, so every university has a different set of regulations. And the one here is that the regulation is that you have to have 20 members to start the society. 20? That's a 20. lot. 20, yeah, which exactly is the problem. Like, I don't know how I'd get 20 members. And I tried to reach out to a few societies, like there's the European Union Society and there's other societies, and they weren't interested. So yeah. I thought, well, okay, can't really do yeah, much that's, else. That's, that's uh, really... Well, so easy then. And no. uh, but you said you're going going away now. That means where do you want to? Where are you going to be in, in autumn? Uh, I really don't know. <laughs> oh, I'm okay. I, I'm trying to find somewhere to do my masters, so I'm applying to Aachen and to Vienna. And why Aachen? Uh, because that's where I did my Erasmus. <laughs> so I okay. already know the city, I, and they do the course I want to do because it's technical. Yeah, and uh, you've been member of EG Aachen before. Yeah, yeah, I still am, but obviously I'm not living there. Now that's how you got in contact with EG for the first time, right? With EG yeah, Aachen? yeah, I, I found out about okay. it about in 2018, but I didn't join until 2019. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well. Too, too busy partying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, the Erasmus, I guess you have a lot of distractions. Although, yeah. isn't EG Aachen doing all the Erasmus activities? Um. I think so, but I think they've scaled it down a bit recently. I don't think okay. it's happening as much now, um, especially with Corona. I don't think there's any activities, yeah. or maybe there is. A, I'm not that active anymore with them. So, yeah. Corona is a good uh, keyword uh, because uh, you live in the UK, and UK is basically like uh, the country in Europe which has the steepest curve when it comes to uh, new infections. So, yeah. how do you feel like living in the UK at I, the moment? I, I feel okay personally because I don't leave the house that often um, and I'm quite young. But I think like if, um, yeah, there's definitely an issue. I think the government acted too late uh, in putting any measures in place. Like we could have had a German style lockdown if we acted really fast. But yeah, but you, but you have Boris didn't. Johnson, so. <laughs> he, he apparently he didn't even make a reaction until mid mid March. Yeah. <laughs> like. He was told in the beginning of February by the scientific advisor that he should do something, and he didn't do anything for six weeks. Yeah, so well, it's just it's just what happens when you vote for these people, I suppose. Yeah, maybe probably maybe not the best uh, prime minister you ever had in the UK. Well, he likes to think he's Winston <laughs> Churchill. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> who, who yeah, either well. isn't the best prime minister we ever had. <laughs> so, who was the best prime minister the UK ever had? Oh, I don't know. I like um, I like Attlee. He's quite good. Okay. He, that was, he created the welfare was, state. 
Yeah, there was. Uh, out, when, when was that? After the First World War? Or? After the Second World War, 45. The Second World War. Oh, mid- yes, exactly. Uh, yes, yes, yes. After the Second World War. Right. Midway through Potsdam, I think it was, because Churchill yeah. had to leave. Exactly. Um, that was uh, that when Stalin was uh, saying, "What, what, is, what, is, what, the, what the hell is going on here? Uh, <laughs> I'm the only one who has left. All the others are new." <laughs> and also, it helped him uh, get a bigger foothold on Eastern Europe. I think. Yeah. Well, anyway, from the book, from the book I finished today, that's what it implies. <laughs> Uh, now I remember also uh, watching a documentary which was saying that Atlee was too soft, and uh, because he was pretty new to the job as well, and uh, so. Yeah. Yeah. But he was quite good internally, I think. He was good at rebuilding. Yeah. So it's your fault that you gave up Eastern Germany, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's our fault. A lot of things happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you gave the country with a huge heritage. I mean, you ruled half of the world, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we were ruled uh, by Germans, so. <laughs> oh, yes, but you, they, they changed the name, so they don't have a German name at least anymore. I, I read a good joke earlier, actually, uh, that they changed their name to uh, Sa- from saxe Gotha to Windsor. Yeah. So Kaiser Wilhelm said, why don't we change the play by Shakespeare called The Merry Wives of Sex Cobo Gotta? <laughs> <laughs> that would be really uh, a change. Apparently anyway, it was the uh, only time Kaiser Wilhelm made a joke. <laughs> anyway, so uh, basically I'm nearly done. I just have like uh, one more question to you. Uh, you... Uh, recently mentioned that you're one of the very few um that you found out that there were very few british people who ever joined the cd right yeah i think i found those three did i can't remember three two or three and not since 1980s or something yeah would you like to change that um not now (laughs) Uh, (laughs) ask me again ask me again in two years okay i will (laughs) <laughs> you can be sure about that. Anyway, so uh, that's the end of the interview. Oh. Uh, I would like to thank you very much for your time. Thank and you. I'm thank looking you forward to, to see you around. Yeah, I'll see you soon.